Building a chatbot with Angular and Dialogflow is almost too easy. In this video, I'm going to show you how to go from zero to chatbot in about 10 minutes. Dialogflow, which was formerly known as API.ai, is an engine for building conversational experiences. It harnesses Google's machine learning and natural language processing technology, then gives developers a user-friendly interface to build chatbots and deploy them to any platform, including the web or Slack or Facebook Messenger. In this episode, we're going to use the JavaScript SDK to build our chatbot directly in Angular. This is just the first video of a multi-part series, so make sure to subscribe if you're just finding me for the first time. And head over to angularfirebase.com to grab the source code for this feature. Let's start by building a new Angular app from the command line using ng-new chatbot, and then we'll cd into that folder. Then we'll install the JavaScript SDK via npm in the development environment. At this point, the SDK is still called API AI, but that may change to Dialogflow in the future. Then I'm going to tell the Angular CLI to not prefix our components with app. So we can just go into the Angular CLI JSON file and replace app with an empty string. So at this point, if you run ng-serve, you should just have a basic Angular app. The next step is to flesh out a feature module for our code. This step is technically optional, but it is a good practice and it will make your life a lot easier as your app grows more complex. First step is to generate a module called chat. Then we can add resources to this module, for example, a service, and we'll use the M flag to make sure that it's included in this module. And then we'll also create a component called chat dialog and place that in the module as well. You can see on the file structure on the left how all of our resources are nested under the chat folder, and the components and services are registered inside the chat module. The only extra bit that we need to add is the Angular Forms module, and then we're also going to set our chat dialog component to exports so it can be used directly in the app component. You might also do this with the router, but our app doesn't have a router, so we're not going to worry about it. Then we're going to jump over to our main app module entry point and import the chat module there. So all we have to do is add it to the import section. Now we can go into the app component and we'll just delete the default code and we'll declare our chat dialog component here. If you pull up the app, you should see the chat dialog component works. Now we can get into the fun part of actually building our chatbot in Dialogflow. So go ahead and sign up, and it's a completely free service, so you don't even have to enter any kind of billing information. And then create your first agent. So in this case, I'm just going to call the agent AngularBot. And its purpose as a chatbot is to just return general information about the Angular framework itself. So let's go ahead and call it a sidekick for Angular developers. The most fundamental purpose of your agent is to detect intent that comes from the user. Let's say our user enters something like, what is a component? If the chatbot has been trained to recognize this phrase, it will detect the intent, and then you can run backend code at this point, or just send a response down to the user. In this case, we'll just tell it to respond with, it's just JavaScript. When the bot doesn't recognize the intent, then you can have it respond with any kind of customized message that you want. Dialogflow allows you to customize this in many different ways, but for now we're just going to focus on the back and forth dialogue between the user and the bot. The first thing you'll do here is add a phrase that the user might say, and you want to add multiple phrases here to make your bot more robust to different types of ways of expressing this intent. The next thing we'll do is have the bot send a response once it recognizes this intent. So in this case, if it recognizes the component intent, it'll just say it's just JavaScript. Go ahead and save the intent, and then up here on the top right corner, you can test it out. So I'll say, hey, what's a component do? And then you can see we get the response here, and we can also look at the JSON response that we'll see once we get back into Angular. So that's actually all it takes to build a basic chatbot with Dialogflow, but I also want to show you a really cool feature called Smalltalk. This allows you to quickly customize the personality of your bot without having to create your own custom intents. So it already has a huge list of possible scenarios here, and you can add your own custom language to them. So if the user says, who are you to the bot, it's going to respond with, I'm AngularBot, I know stuff about Angular. This is a great place to impress your users by adding funny or intelligent responses to these common questions. Now that we have a basic agent, let's go ahead and put it to use in Angular. Before we leave Dialogflow, we need to grab the client access token. So we do that by clicking on the agent, then from the main agent page, we can just copy the client access token right there. Then we'll go back into Angular and add that client token inside of our environment TS file. In some cases, it's not secure to add an API key here, but since Dialogflow is free and doesn't have write access, we're okay to do it. If you wanna learn more about API security, check out my Dark Sky API video. The first thing I wanna show you is how to communicate with your bot. 
So we're going to go back into the service that we created earlier and we'll import the environment that we just added our API token to, as well as the API AI client that we had installed at the beginning of the video. First, I'm going to set a read-only variable for the token, and then I'll go ahead and use that token to initialize the API AI client. So we just set that as another variable called client and pass it the API token. Then we're going to send a basic text request to the bot. So I'm gonna set up a method here called talk, and then to make this request, we just call client text request with the text that we want to send. This sends an HTTP request to Dialogflow, which then responds with JSON of the actual response from the agent. So we'll just console log that to see what the data actually looks like. So I can set this up by going into our chat dialog component, and then I'll inject the chat service in the constructor, and then I can just call that talk method that we just defined. Then you can see the response is just a plain JavaScript object. We don't even have to parse it. And it has all of this information, including the fulfillment speech, which is the actual text we're looking for, which is what the bot is saying back to the user. So that's how you get the raw data, but now let's refactor things so we get something that's a little more user-friendly. I'm going to use RxJS to create an observable array of messages. So I'm going to import observable as well as behavior subject. And then I'm going to create a message class just to define the way a message should look. So it's just gonna have content, which is a string, and it's also going to have a sent by property to distinguish between bots and humans. Then inside the chat service, I'm going to set a variable called conversation that is a behavior subject typed to an array of messages with a default value as an empty array. Then to make updates to this array, I'm going to create a function here that is called update, this just calls next on the behavior subject and it will clean up our code a little bit. So anytime we wanna add a new message to the message feed, we just call this method with the corresponding message object. So the conversation is going to start with a message from the user. That message is going to be in the form of a string. So we'll just go ahead and take that string and convert it to our message object. So we'll set the content equal to the message and the sent by property to the user. Then to add this to the UI, we'll just call this.update with the user message. Once we have that, we can go ahead and send the request to Dialogflow with that text. Just like we did before, we'll call client text request, which returns a promise, and then we'll take the response from that promise and format it as a message from the bot. So we can get the bot's actual text response from result fulfillment speech. Then just like we did with the user message, we'll make this an instance of the message class and then call the update method on it. So let's go ahead and switch over to the chat dialog component and put this service to use. First, we're going to import the chat service as well as the message class that we had defined in there. And then we're also going to need an RxJS observable class and the RxJS scan operator. So we want our messages to be an observable array of messages. So we'll be able to do that by tapping into the behavior subject that we created in the service. So we'll set a variable for messages and then also one for the form value, which we'll see once we get to the HTML. Then we can go ahead and inject the chat service in the constructor. Then we need to convert that behavior subject into an observable array. So let's see how we can do that with the scan operator. We'll go ahead and call the behavior subject as an observable. So chat service conversation as observable, and then we'll add the scan operator to it. So scan gives us the current value as well as the accumulated total in that behavior subject. So what we can do is use those two values to concatenate a new array together. In JavaScript, that's as simple as saying old array concat new array. The end result is an observable array that we can loop over in the HTML with the async pipe as we'll see here shortly. So the next thing we need to do is have the user send a message. So we can do that by taking the form value, which we'll set up with ng-model here in the HTML. Then we can call the converse method from the service. So this is just an event handler that will bind to some events in the HTML. So the first thing I wanna do here is loop over that observable list of messages. We can do that with ng4 and the async pipe. So that'll give us access to the message object. Then I'm going to use ng-class to distinguish the bot messages from the actual human messages. So the from messages will be sent by the bot and the to messages will be sent by the user. Then we can just drop in the message content and that's all we need to show the message. The other step is to set up a form so the user can actually type their message. 
The quickest way to take care of that is with ng model. So we just set up a form input here with ng model set to the form value. And then when the user clicks the enter button, we'll go ahead and fire that event handler that will send the message to Dialogflow. And then I'll also go ahead and set up a button here that fires the event handler on click as well in case the user doesn't have an enter button. If you want the same front end styling I have here, you'll need to include the milligram CSS framework in your project. And I also posted the custom CSS styles on the main lesson page. Now let's load our Angular app and try it out. If we say hello there, the bot responds with good day. So we respond with how are ya? And the bot says couldn't be better. These are the default responses from Smalltalk, but you can customize this behavior any way you want. For example, we customize the who are you intent. So if we ask that question, then we should get back, I'm AngularBot, I know stuff about Angular. Then we can trigger our custom intent by saying, what is a component, Mr. Bot? Dialogflow is smart enough to detect the corresponding intent and it responds with, it's just JavaScript. When we're all done, we can just say, see you later. And the bot responds with goodbye. That's it for Angular Dialogflow. If this video helped you, please like and subscribe. And if you want to take your chatbot to the next level and deploy it to other platforms, consider becoming a pro member at angularfirebase.com. You'll get a free copy of my book as well as one-on-one -on -one project consulting. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.